Okay, this is a quick video giving you an overview of the Quantum GIS desktop and environment. Uh, this is native vanilla install of QGIS, as it is called. Um, it's like any other system. You have your drop-down menus at the top, settings, plugins. Uh, we tend to use kind of three types of data. Vector data, which is point lines and areas, the GIS analysis, and raster data, which is like a, a grid of cells. So the same kind of things you get out of your digital camera. Uh, things that are made up of pixels in two dimensions or voxels in three dimensions. And then databases. You can connect to databases that hold lots of what's called attribute information. So stuff about things that exist in space. Um, so there's a whole heap of way of actually adding this data in and then um, visualizing it. So here you can add in vector data and raster data, PostGIS, which is a specific um, vector format held in a database called PostGIS, uh, which is based upon a database called Postgres. Spatialite, which is a smaller lightweight database. Uh, MSSQL, which is now MariaDB. Um, and Oracle Spatial. Um, web mapping, uh, web coverage services and web feature services, adding in delimited text. You like to have things that have an X field and a Y field with coordinates in it. You can add it in here and then display it as points. Uh, and shape files, so a whole heap of different data. Um, you can also extend the base environment um, by using things called plugins. Plugins are very powerful. So we currently don't have any plugins installed at the moment. So what we're going to do is go into the plugin manager uh, where it checks what's there. Oh, actually, we have the default plugins installed. And um, well, we can add in a number of different plugins. First of all, I'm just going to put Google in there uh, because that gives us the open layers plugin. This allows us to uh, visualize OpenStreetMap, Google Maps, Bing Map layers, uh, and other such useful stuff. So it can provide context to where we are. Uh, we're going to be doing some digitizing. So I put in digitize. Now, I don't put in digitize in the UK spelling because there's nothing there. Um, because it's mainly focused on um, US spellings. So we can install that plugin. Brilliant. Um, that's probably all we want, it's an auto trace. I just add that in anyway. You can look at stuff and just review it. You can also use context sensitive stuff. So you right click in the toolbars, you'll find out that there's things that you can add in, such as the advanced toolbar, the database toolbar. Okay. So, you know, like you would in any normal kind of Windows graphical environment, your right click provides context menu. So, now we've got this plugins in, we see the plugins are available here. We can, for example, add in the OpenStreetMap layer. So it's now going away to a uh, online service. It is serving out OpenStreetMap and it can pull in the data and we can use that to see where we are. Here we are as we zoom into the UK. <coughs> so there's Sheffield. Now when you're in here you can start to move around. So as you notice here I've got to zoom in and out. One click left click will zoom me in about 50%. You see here that the scale is changing. Or I can draw a window and zoom into an area. Similarly, right click, sorry, click on the minus window. One click will take you out, double the amount that you see in the scale. Or you can do a zoom out window. So a small one means zoom out a lot. And a large one means zoom out a little bit. You can zoom to a full extent. Or you can pan around. 
and it's obviously not very useful when you're so far out. So let's go in. Here we are. So we can use this to start to pan around. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of um, you know the zooming and panning functionality. You can also add in um, vector and raster data here, um, and we'll go into that in a great in more detail in other um, videos. Okay, thank you very much.